Picture this. You're standing at the edge of a winding river, boots sinking into soft, rain-soaked earth. The air smells like secrets, fresh rain and old stone. The current isn't just pulling water, it's pulling stories. And one of them might just end with a gem in your hand worth more than you could ever imagine. Welcome to the treasure trail. Today we're diving into nature's hidden vaults, where the world's most precious gemstones hide in plain sight along rivers and streams. No metal detectors, no industrial tools, just your eyes, your instincts, and the secrets you're about to learn. Before we dive into specific spots, we need to understand why rivers are prime gemstone hunting grounds. Over millions of years, erosion wears away at mountains, carrying mineral-rich debris downstream. The heavier materials like garnets, sapphires, rubies, and even diamonds get trapped in low-energy zones of the river. Look for natural traps, bends in the river, behind large boulders, along inside curves, or in crevices between bedrock. These are nature's golden gem catchers. Not all rivers are equal. Mountain streams with a fast drop in elevation tend to be rockier and more turbulent, perfect for exposing heavier minerals. Rivers flowing through known gem-producing areas, like the Appalachian Mountains or parts of Madagascar, are your best bets. Rivers with high sediment movement during flood season are ideal as they churn up older mineral layers and redeposit gems. Let's talk about gem traps, places where nature naturally sorts out heavy materials from lighter ones. Picture a fast-flowing stream hitting a log jam or rock shelf. The heavier materials get left behind while lighter materials float on. Search. Downstream of large obstacles, along natural riffles or gravel bars, behind log jams or fallen trees, in cracks in the bedrock along shallow waters. Think of the river as a storyteller. It reveals its history through erosion patterns, sediment buildup, and water clarity. Areas with visible bedrock, especially where water flows around obstructions, are high priority zones. Watch for sudden changes in river flow, exposed bedrock shelves, or dry crevices during low water seasons. That's where gems settle and stay hidden. Some terrains practically scream gemstones here. Look for red or orange soil, indicating iron oxide, presence of quartz or schist, areas with volcanic rock nearby, pebbles with high luster or glassy surfaces. These signs can help narrow your search before even dipping a toe into the water. Let's get specific. Common gemstones found in rivers include garnets, small deep red, roundish stones, sapphires, blue, green, or yellow, often look dull before cutting, rubies, rare, deep red stones found in select rivers, quartz crystals, clear, often mistaken for diamonds, jade, found in smooth river stones with an oily surface, Uncut gemstones often look unimpressive. Learn to identify them by their density, hardness, and unique shine under sunlight. Rain can be a gemstone hunter's best friend. Flash floods churn up riverbeds and reveal new gravel layers, sometimes unearthing stones that were buried for decades. Visit rivers right after rainfall or during seasonal transitions spring melt, or monsoon washouts. Water movement clears debris and exposes fresh deposits. Riverbeds are not random. If you see gravel sorted by size, that's a great sign. Heavier materials like gems settle into small pockets within these sorted gravels. Tip. Walk in a zigzag pattern. Look for odd-shaped or unusually shiny pebbles. Focus on darker, iron-rich patches where heavier materials naturally concentrate. Avoid muddy riverbanks with no exposed rocks, 
stagnant water zones, or areas where sediment covers the bedrock too deeply. Flat, slow-moving rivers rarely yield results. Focus instead on places where you can see clear, shallow water and gravel channels. If the river doesn't challenge you to climb rocks or step carefully, it may not challenge you with treasure either. Now that we've mapped out the hidden language of rivers and learned the signs nature uses to whisper secrets of gemstones, what if we told you there's more? Hidden clues only the most seasoned rock hounds know. Clues that even trained geologists miss. It's time to go deeper. Stay with us as we reveal the overlooked art of gemstone hunting in rivers. The advanced tricks, rare formations, and little-known signs that scream, Dig here! So far we've waded through riffles, studied bends, peered into plunge pools, and chased ancient whispers embedded in gravel bars. But now, now we dive deeper. This isn't just about spotting the obvious. This is where instinct sharpens, observation deepens, and the river begins to reveal its true treasure map. Stop. Turn. Look at your wall beside you, where the river has sliced a vertical bank. These cut banks, usually opposite to point bars, are dynamic zones of erosion. The water here moves with incredible force, chiseling through decades of sediment. Here's the secret. When water slices like this, heavier materials, including gemstones, often tumble and get lodged in tiny pockets or crevices within the exposed layers. Use a small pick or even your hands to gently scrape at these walls. Don't rush. Watch for small flashes, deep tones, or oddly colored minerals. Garnets, zircon, even sapphire can be held prisoner here, hidden behind years of packed silt. And don't forget, roots from overhanging trees may cradle gravel clusters, nature's own basket. If you see a field of large stones gathered near a river curve, pause. These rock gardens are the river's message board. Heavy stones settle here, dragged by seasonal floods. And if boulders made it, you better believe gemstones did too. But they're trickier to spot, lodged beneath or between stones, packed under pressure, sometimes obscured by algae or moss. Here's a trick. Flip small stones and watch the ground beneath. Clean spots, use a squeeze bottle to blow away sediment. If you find small quartz pebbles or micro garnets, dig in. These are often the breadcrumbs to larger finds. And remember, even a common stone with slight translucency could hide a sapphire in disguise. It sounds too easy, doesn't it? But sometimes treasure announces itself. After rainfall or during early morning when everything's wet, Sunlight reflects off wet stones differently. Gemstones, even in their raw form, may show a faint glow, an internal shine, a peculiar transparency. Position yourself with the sun behind your shoulder. Walk slowly, scanning for anything that flashes irregularly. Not like metallic sparkle, but a deeper, subtler gleam. Keep your eyes low and your pace slow. This moment is part science, part instinct. The shimmer you spot could be the first glimpse of a tourmaline, a garnet, even a rough emerald waiting in plain sight. Sometimes the river doesn't carve down. It peels back the history of the landscape. Look for places where horizontal layers of gravel, clay, and rock are exposed, either in cliffs or dried out beds. Pay attention to the contact zones, where two different types of material meet. These interfaces are the resting spots for denser materials. Sift the base of the gravel layer. Look for heavies, black sand, magnetite, or reddish garnet sand. These signs are like arrows pointing toward gemstone potential. The gemstones might be embedded in a tough matrix, 
hard rock that you'll need to break later. But finding them? That's the true win. If you find exposed bedrock with round or oval holes carved into them, drop to your knees. These potholes are formed by swirling rocks grinding into bedrock over thousands of years. Heavier objects like gemstones fall in and settle. And here's the twist. Many of these potholes haven't been disturbed since formation. Use a probe or even your hand. Scoop slowly. The material at the bottom may be damp, sticky, even smell earthy, but it could hide century-old garnets or peridot rolled in from faraway hills. Always clean the pothole carefully. Gemstones often sink to the deepest part of the hole. Where water drops, things stop. Under waterfalls or steep rapids, look for wide, shallow basins or rocky shelves. These areas act like filters. Heavy material drops out quickly and gathers here. Often, the rocks are slippery and the water is fast. Be safe. But if you can access the gravel pockets below a drop, those pockets are often bursting with heavy minerals. Garnets, epidote, zircon, and even topaz crystals can concentrate here, washed in from miles upstream. Look closely at the gravel texture. Uniform round pebbles usually mean older flow. Jagged mixed gravel? That's fresh input, and that's your cue to investigate deeper. Sometimes the gemstone didn't travel downriver, it fell from above. Look for talus slopes, those loose, broken rock fields on the side of hills adjacent to the river. These slides bring raw material straight from bedrock. Gem-rich pegmatite veins often dislodge fragments during erosion or rain. Scree piles often end at or near the river, forming gravel tongues. Follow them. They may seem like loose junk, but tucked among the dull grays, you may find chunks of gem-laced quartz, rough aquamarines, or even emerald-bearing schist. The closer you are to the source, the rougher and larger your finds. So the next time you step into a riverbed, don't just wade, read. Each bend, boulder, and grain is a whisper from the earth, a clue left behind in the endless shuffle of water and stone. You don't need fancy instruments, just eyes wide open, hands ready to dig, and a heart tuned to discovery. Gemstones aren't just found, they're earned by those who see beyond the obvious. So, are you ready to chase rivers with purpose? This is EGS Pro, where nature's secrets become your guidebook. If you found this journey helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next deep dive into Earth's hidden treasures. Until next time, may your rivers run rich.